Hi everyone, welcome back to Rich Reviews. So today we're gonna to cover off the Winter Workshop spark plugs. We were gonna put stage one of the spark plug replacements in the previous video, but because it's been quite an extensive piece of work to remove the coil packs, we thought it better to put this part, removing, explaining how to remove the coil packs and actually swapping out the spark plugs into one single video for you. So you know how to remove the coil packs and then swap out the spark plugs all in one go in one video for you. So the first stage in replacing spark plugs is making sure that you've got as best access as possible. In the previous video, you would have seen us removing the engine cover. And obviously this cover has been on top of here to make sure no dirt, um, or any other particles get down um, and cause a problem with um, getting dirt on the car in effect because I've cleaned all this off now. Um, you'll have seen previously when we took the engine cover off, this was all dirty while well, I've cleaned all this off. And to clean all this off, all I've used is warm water, a small amount of warm water, clean cloths, um, a bristly brush, that's all. The first thing you need to do is make as best access as possible. Now, if you look down this side, you'll see the space is very constrained. It's very, very difficult to get your hands down there and to get access to the coil packs. It's just a nightmare in general, to be honest. It's clearly these cars weren't designed to be worked on by any engineer, really. It still looks nowadays, looking at how these cars are designed, that the cars were pretty much designed to be engineered out to do major work, um, even though you can do all this part, you can do all this work with the engine in situ. It just seems to me that the cars are still designed to have the engine taken out to do major work on them because this axis is terrible to, to replace the spark plugs. And obviously a spider is worse because everything's more constrained and squashed up. It's a lot easier in an Italia. So first thing is to move cables out of the way as much as possible. Provide access, so give yourself good access. Because these have got these bespoke type of clips on here. I didn't want to remove those clips because I haven't got replacement clips. So what I've done is I initially tied it back to here when I removed these coil packs. I put a tie clip around here, um, but now I've loosened it off because I had a coil pack to get out there. And what I've done is I've pulled this pipe. To, these are the fuel tanks. So I've pulled this pipe to the fuel tank, which is a breather pipe to the fuel tank. I've tied this back with a tie clip here temporarily to get it out of the way, but obviously you don't want to put this under excessive strain. Also what I've done is I have disconnected this cable. This cable is connected further down. You can't see it at the moment because I've got rags in the plug holes, but this connector is connected further down to a sensor. I think it's the knock sensor further down here. And it causes a major problem with regards to gaining access to the coil pack. But this cable is linked underneath the coil pack to begin with. So you can't disconnect and remove this until you've got the coil pack loose, but we'll get into that in a minute. So the first thing you need to do is you need to disconnect the coil pack plugs. So this plug is usually connected to, if I just show you a coil pack here, this is a coil pack. I've already removed the coil pack because they were a nightmare to get out. And it would have, I, I would have been on camera for four hours with you guys if I was going through the whole process of, of removing the coil packs. So this connects into this, like so. And it's retained with that lip and this catch. So this catch sinks over that lip and is retained. And then to prevent this from being opened, later on this pushes down and then releases the ability releases the catch so you can then pull the, the lead off the coil pack to prevent that from being pushed down later on and inadvertently the, the lead coming off which is not going to anyway to be honest because it's quite a quite a uh, because it's quite a tight interference fit once you've then put the coil pack back on the lead back on the coil pack you then push this back in like this and it stops this from being pushed down and, and enabling the cable to come to be taken off. So you first of all get a little screwdriver behind that yellow part and then you ease that back just a little bit so it enables you to push this part down so you can then push that down and then pull the lead off the coil pack. Obviously the coil packs is still in the head at the time there um, when you're doing that. Then what you need to do is We'll put some pictures in here as well so you can see with the coil packs in situ. The coil packs are flush against the, the, the cylinder head. Obviously this connects to the spark plug at the end so the spark plugs are very deeply inset into the, into the cylinder head. You need to put um, lubrication fluid around here. Now I use WD-40, you can use some sort of silicon, silicon fluid if you want, some sort of silicon lubrication, but you need to pretty much get a lot, as, as much as you can around this part 
Um, you won't be able to gain access to this part because it will be in the, in the head. So you'll have to just try and lubricate around here as much as possible to try and get these bellows eased up. Because these bellows, they cause major suction. They prevent any dirt from ingressing into the, into the spark plug holes, but they, they cause major suction and major problems getting the, getting the core packs out of the head. In, in the, I believe in the 430 and in other Ferraris and in other makes and models of cars, they retain the core packs with a retainer bolt. They don't use this sort of bellows situation where you have a very tight interference fit. It's a nightmare on these, to be honest. Um, they've, they've decided to do it for whatever reason on the 458 and onwards. They've decided to use these sort of um, sealing approach for the core packs without using a separate bolt to retain them. And it, it was just, it's absolute hell getting them out, guys, uh, on a spider. Now this part, this part here, this, this protruding part, this, this lug, if you like, or key, as it's known in the engineering term, this key locates into a slot in the engine port. As you can see there, there's the, the little slot, the key slot on the right hand side. That's where the core pack lo set locates into. That's where the head of the core pack lo set locates into. So when, when you're fitting the core packs in, you have to push the core pack in and then swivel it around to that part, then locates that, that key part locates in with that slot. But when you're removing the coil pack, what you need to do is just ease it gently side side to side a little bit just ease it a little bit side to side they'll be very very tight in there to begin with and try and get some lubrication down the side and then ease it a bit more and a little bit more lubrication and ease it a bit more it's you've got to have a lot of patience guys <laughs> when you're doing this and then when you pull the coil pack out as you can see if we again put a coil pack back actually back in here so you can see it how it would locate you can see there where the coil pack is on the bellows there but that coil pack obviously is out now. Um, so I'm not gonna push it all the way back in because it'd be a nightmare to get the bloody thing back out again. But you can see there where the coil pack is and you can see the angle of the coil pack. You have to pull these coil packs at the same way, at the same angle they go in. You must not pull them at an angle. You must pull them straight out. That is vital. Otherwise you will break a coil pack. These coil packs are around 96 pounds, including VAT each. Yep, you heard that right, guys, around 96 pounds each, and that's a good price for them. They're very expensive. And usually, if you do break a coil pack, they break around here, here, or, or at the end. Now, usually these, you know, they're not gonna break too much at the end. They're likely to break here or here. If they break here, then you've got this section still stuck on the plug because that section that contact inside i don't know if you can see that probably not but a contact deep inside there is what locates onto the spark plug and if you break this part and this stays in that barrel part of this of the head you've got an absolute nightmare job trying to get that out um it's it's a it's a nightmare and what i should have said as well is when you start putting the lubrication down you want to start doing that a couple of days preferably before you're thinking about taking the coil packs out so the lubrication has time to work down these bellows and ease them up a bit um, because that'll be vital to getting the coil packs out and then when you pull the coil packs pull them out in a straight line do not pull them out at an angle or you'll snap them the banks one and eight are very very restricted with access access is restricted anyway but banks number one is down there so this is the right hand bank um, obviously it's a v8 so this is the right hand bank of the of the v8 cylinder bank uh, cylinder position number one is down there and cylinder position number eight is down there and those two are the nightmare the real nightmare ones and they were the hardest to get out so the number in for interest eight one two three four five six seven eight so one and eight are hell so you have to provide as best access as possible um, this has the worst access but this was actually easier to get out than that side it's just how it, how it works out now what i did to try and ease the approach i'll show you a little tool i made to help get the core packs out now this tool was actually designed by a friend of mine now it's not really a tool but you'll see what it is when i show you this tool was, was designed by a friend of mine, Martin, and you'll see Martin when we're actually remo removing the spark plugs because he's, he's gonna help me physically replace the spark plugs. It's a piece of wire. <laughs> now, 
you preferably you need a thick single cord piece of wire that has insulation around it so it insulates not electrically but insulates um, for softness against you know where it holds against the end of the call pack and this has got to be a certain length a certain size otherwise too much too much loop here and you're not it's going to be um, restricting you with regards to how much space you have to move out especially in the spider so what you do if you imagine this coil pack still in the compartment and let's show you actually on the engine imagine this coil pack is in situ and that is the one of the easiest ones actually to get out the one I've got there so what you do is remember in this call pack would be flush against that face it's obviously out here but it'll be flush against that face what you have to do is get this wire around the base of the call pack then you close it up underneath the back making sure it's right underneath the, the strong sections of the back of the coil pack and then what you do is you get a screwdriver or I use a very thin extension bar for a socket so a socket extension bar I put a socket extension bar under there you make sure again it's very tight underneath there and and you then pull it from the side in a straight line and you pull it out so you pull it out in a straight line and that when you've got it lubricated it helps to remove the coil pack what I found some of the coil packs could be removed just with this so they popped out when I say popped out they were still a nightmare but they popped out a bit easier because of the lubricant I'd put around the sides and judiciously moving them around etc um, some of them I could pull them part, part way out with this and then I could get my fingers underneath the back of the coil packs just a little bit and then again let right over the car thankfully I'm a fairly tall person and most of my height is in my legs so I just got down there and I was actually doing this <laughs> leaning right across the car and getting my hands right down there getting my hands right down there and pulling pulling them out but in a straight line back after I teased them out a little bit with this with this piece of um, cable doesn't look much guys but that so that pretty much was the difference between being able to get them out without breaking them and not and having to pay 96 quid for each one of these to replace them the ones that you break obviously so that's a bit long-winded sorry about that guys but you should really spend the time if you want to do this work yourself then you really need to allocate a good few days to try and get the call packs out they are a nightmare but they're 96 quid each including that you take your choices guys or let a dealership do it for you and i think a dealership will charge you probably around 500 or 600 pounds to replace the um, the spark plugs um, and the spark plugs usually they charge you on top of that um, so I, I don't know you know I, I, I've got some quotes before but the quotes are outdated if you enjoyed the video so far please give the video a thumbs up very important for the channel and if you're not subscribed please think about subscribing now back to the video so there you have it the the, the hardest part I cannot emphasize this enough the hardest part of replacing the spark plugs is getting out the old coil packs on a spider it's usually eight years i believe when you should change the spark plugs when a recommended duration to change the spark plugs now think on it it's interesting that the seven year service pack lasts for seven years and then the eighth year you should be changing your spark plugs eighth eighth or ninth year it is you should be changing your spark plugs so yeah clearly they didn't want that introduced into the seven year service pack did they because it's a bit of a nightmare of a job it's quite an extensive job but I would recommend that once you have changed the spark plugs if you change them yourself once you've changed them and you're going to keep the car i would recommend you doing them every three years after that and the reason i'm saying that is not because the spark plugs are likely to fail in that period of time but because if you do it every three years it doesn't give you too much time or doesn't give the core packs too much time to seize into the blocks and they'll be easier to remove now talking about them seizing in there we're going to then the next task is going to be replacing the actual spark plugs so they're quite small some places will charge you 40 to 60 pounds for these i think ferrari will charge around 42 pounds each for these just to get you get you close up that's the spark plug you should be buying and that's what you should be focusing on is that id
and that's what they look like. Got a dual side electrode, single electrode down the center and dual side bits. Now, a thing to remember about these spark plugs, very, very vital. Be careful where you buy them from. I recommend you buy them from Marinello parts or Euro car parts or Euro spares. Euro spares, I think it is, or Marinello car parts. Marinello parts, in effect, is Ferrari parts. Because fakes are rife and they're quite tricky to, to check the fakes. Now, I got my spark plugs fairly cheaply. Certainly not, I didn't pay £42 on each for them. But I knew how to check fakes. So I'd researched about the fake situation and how to check for fakes. And I also put in a call in to NGK to check the batch number, the batch number on the spark plugs. The first way to check to test a fake on the spark plug, by the way, is that batch number. A lot of them don't have that batch number. And if they don't have that batch number, you definitely know it's a fake. There's other ways of telling as well. But if they don't have that batch number, then it's a fake. But some of them have that batch number. Some fakes have that batch number. This is my personal batch number for the batch that I've got. Um, and you can check with NGK. So if you go onto their website, you go to their contact us section and you can put in just a, a message to them and say, hey, I've bought a set of spark plugs. I just want to check the batch number to make sure they're genuine. And you put the batch number in there um, and they'll come back and verify it for you. And they're pretty quick. So, so that's a good way of checking if, you, if you're not too sure about the NGKs you bought. But if you're buying from Marinello Parts or from Euro Spares, you're good to go. They're not going to sell any fakes, obviously. So the next stage is going to be replacing the spark plugs. That is a bit of a doozy of a job as well, to be honest, but nowhere near as bad as doing the call packs as getting these buggers out. This is the worst part. So once you've got all of these out, then, you know, you can have a little bit of a celebration dance, guys, because it's a good feeling when you get all eight call packs out. I know it sounds freaking stupid, but these were hell to get out. A really good sense of achievement to get these out without breaking any. Um, but that's the hardest part. The second, the next stage that we'll be doing in this, we'll be showing you and going through actually replacing the spark plugs and the convoluted approach that you need to use with a set of tools to actually get the spark plugs out. And my very good friend Martin who you would have heard me mention before everybody needs a Martin because he's helped me out a lot he provided the spaces for my car the hills engineering spaces and he provided me some carpets for the car as well as a very good friend he's coming over to help me swap out the spark plugs because he's got a fantastic set of tools so Martin will join me for swapping out spark plugs which is the next stage so now we're going to do the actual replacement of the plugs we've got the call packs out as I detailed earlier and we've got our friend Martin here hi everyone so this is Martin, and ergo, everybody needs a Martin. This is the Martin I've talked about previously on video. He's kindly turned up. He's traveled a hell of a long way to come and join us and to help me um, take the plugs out. He's got all the kit, but he has got the idea. <laughs> and he's now at the moment, we've blown out, or Martin's blown out the sockets, blown out the, Martin's blown out the recesses where the spark plugs go with an airline because he's brought his own compressor and airline just to make sure there's absolutely no dirt in there and at the moment what he's doing is just removing um, one of the plugs we've already done this side and he's removing one of the plugs from this side to provide good visibility for you so one of the easy to see plugs he's just removing one of the plugs now and then we'll put some dielectric grease on the plug end to be able to seat it back in properly and when we put the new plug in and then we'll put the core pack on and the core pack will have, will have some dielectric grease on top of the core pack as well and on the bellows section of the core pack so that it doesn't glue itself into the block again into the cylinder head like they were before so it'll make it easier for whoever takes these core packs out in the future it'll be a lot easier for them as you can see there he's just pulled out one of the spark plugs there from from the left hand bank Looks very pretty nice actually. Yeah. It's difficult to get a a good reading on the on the car when you've been driving it in and out of the garage at slow speeds with cold engines. Yeah. One of the things we were talking about earlier is that as Martin said that as Martin was saying there, when you take the plugs out, when the car's been driven slowly in and out, um, in and out of the garage like this one has a bit you're not going to get a true colour rating on the spark plug of how the engine is performing because it's going to be more suited up because you really need to be on a long run and then check the plugs but nobody's going to do that when you've got to take the engine cover off and gain access to this like this it's, it's more of a check that used to perform back in the old days and also Ferraris tend to run a bit richer um, just how they're designed to protect the engine a bit more so you're not going to get you know that accurate of a reading but in taking that all into account that colouring I don't know if you can actually see that guys but that is actually not bad it's not too bad at all. Maybe it's a little bit suited up because of being a bit richer, because of being just used for short journeys recently, um, which is going to show the characteristics of the short journeys. 
The march has just taken another one out here. It's nice and reassuring as well. They've not been put in too tight. That's normally a problem, but they're only there's just an over finger around about 15 newton meters. Mm -hmm. It's plenty to take the crush washer down on one of these. I don't know if you can hear what Martin said there, but um, what Martin was saying there was that they should be torqued to 15 newton meters and sometimes some of the spark plugs are torqued too heavily down but it looks like the ferrari mechanics that built this engine obviously the engine as i said previously was built on a block so it was built outside of the car because this engine hasn't been touched since the car was built in 2015 um, and it was 15 newton meters um, was the actual torque that they used which is what they specify so they didn't over torque them they were torqued to the correct amount and this is the how much we're talking them down to as well is 15 newton meters so we've got two out from the left hand bank cylinder head now as well not a lot of air pressure on it, really. so what martin's doing here is he's just blowing the the recesses where the spark plugs fit in so the spark plugs have been removed out but we're just making absolutely sure that the threads are clear belt and braces even though we blew them out beforehand then took the plugs out just blow them out again just to make sure there's absolutely definitely no crap down there in the plug ports and then these are the new plugs so then we start putting the new plugs in so the process of putting the new plugs in get the bloody boxes open first get a little bit of dielectric grease A little bit of dielectric grease on the thread. You don't need loads here, just a very little amount. Then you hand it over to your Martin. <laughs> and you've got to be so careful here that you don't drop the plug down the hole before the actual plug is located at the end of the of the plug hole so what martin's done is he's seated the worst side which is plug number eight which is this side so he seated the worst side plug in which was a nightmare for me to get the coil pack out it's and gonna, what he's doing there you want to just show the uh, extent of the swivels and so the... if you if you look through here how we've got this convoluted connected with all the different swivels to gain access to the plug there you can just about see there guys where the actual convoluted extensions are are working to connect to this port number eight this bank left hand bank number eight plug socket plug hole absolute bloody nightmare and we've got if you track back if you track back jacob through here if you tr if you track back you can see where we've got it through this part of the frame of the car excuse me you've got it tracked but we've got it through this part of the frame of the car to be able to provide a better access to it because this is the torque wrench martin has a fantastic set of kit all snap on i keep telling him it's brittle but he won't have it um, it's all a very very high high quality snap-on torque kit and this is a snap-on torque wrench and the torque wrench is set to 15 newton meters and so he's just talking it up now and there you go it's just just there breaking on 15 newton meters that's another thing guys do not over tighten these whatever you do it's an aluminium head you do not want to over tighten your spark plugs so we're just going to show you putting one of the core packs in First of all, dielectric grease again. This is the bellows part, as I detailed earlier, that really sticks into the, into the plug bore section, into the plug hole. So you have to make sure you put a little bit of dielectric grease onto the thread. And then a little bit on the end, just a little bit on the end, not too much, where it just, it's just so it eases it over for the plug, when, so that this eases over the plug and it seats in better. And this, dielectric grease on the bellows section on the core pack at the back helps prevent it from gluing from gluing into the plug bore hole into the plug hole remember this is dielectric grease so it's not going to cause any problems with electrics it's special for electronic systems electrical and electronic systems dielectric grease so okay. don't just use normal high temperature grease or anything like that motion about the tang on it as well there's a little tiny oh, yeah. locator tang on the end of the coil pack which locates into the top of the uh, cam box lid and it orientates the um, coil pack in the right orientation for the connector so that tang has to says martin has said there it needs to locate properly into the into the head that's it and then he's just connected the lead back up there to the coil pack as well so that's 
Number, I've got to try and remember what the number in sequence is now. That's number five, five, yeah. That's number five done. Bit of dielectric grease around the bellow section of the coil pack. Just move it around with your finger. You don't want you don't want loads on there because if you put too much on there, it will cause an effect where it will prevent it from sealing in and it will seal it too much. And a little bit of dielectric grease at the end again, so that the plug, the plug end the plug end node I think it's called seats in properly the cord pack seats in properly over the plug node end and there's that little nodule that Martin was detailing that fits into the into what is it actually is it cylinder head or cam block cam cam head it's a cylinder cam, it's the cam cam box lid cam box lid yeah, it's a cam cover yeah so it sits in properly into the cam box lid because it keys in there's a slot in there in the um in the cam box lid I'm just then you hand it over to Martin. Everyone needs a Martin. Yeah, everybody needs a Martin. Just to qualify, Martin has done this already on his own 458 Italia. So he has a lot of experience of changing the plugs. And he's just now plugging the core pack back in. And that's that one done. So we're on to the next one. So we're not going to go through and show you the rest of them because they're all the same. That, guys, is how you remove the coil packs, which is hell. <laughs> You take out the plugs, replace the plugs with the proper types of plugs and you fit the core packs back in properly so as they're easy to remove again later on. The core packs, as I detailed earlier, is the main problem with swapping out your plugs. And that's it. <laughs>